Last week, I dropped a video in which Money Long had a conversation on the Joe Budden podcast where she distinguished between producers and musicians and discussed how increasingly more and more a lot of producers aren't classically trained musicians or traditional musicians when it comes to composing a track. And that's why a lot of R&B beats nowadays don't have bridges just because that's a little more musically advanced than what most modern day producers are capable of. That was a controversial topic. Well, she's back and she's talking budgets. She's talking about how much it costs to be an artist. And when she discussed buying beats, she said beats can range from 5,000 to 40,000. I talk about selling beats all day on, on social media on my youtube channel i've seen people claim that producers used to get half a million dollars for a beat they don't know they, they've never seen dr dre's bank account or his producer agreements and his advance checks so a lot of people are just getting their information that's floating around the, the internet producer community rumor mill a lot of artists are apprehensive about spending money on their careers and this this conversation about how much it costs to be a successful artist is one that's that's constantly being had. And I've seen people say it costs a quarter of a million dollars to be a successful artist. Some people have said it's $50,000 because you need all you need is a radio campaign. We're going to talk about her math. We're going to talk about beat prices. The full MEC podcast episode is below. That's the new channel. We talk about a lot of other topics in that. I appreciate you watching. Thank you. And now you got to pay for the beats. So they're anywhere from 5000 to 40000 a track, depending on who you're working with, times 14, so 400,000. So let's just say 250 plus 120. Now you're already at 300,000. That eliminates 75% of the people who are aspiring. I didn't realize how much money that it takes to actually be, this is before you market, this is before you shoot a video, this is before you do an appearance. They tell you to invest in yourself, but it's also a bit scary investing in yourself. The is the most important thing. But there are so many other things that it takes to take that song and make it be worth something. There are hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars that go into taking a song and sharing it with the world. And so that's the conversation that I think should be had. Yeah, that, that math is wild. That is that is not the amount of money that it takes to be an artist. I know that a lot of artists that aren't really that serious are just waiting for an excuse that's not their fault so they can be like, yeah, that's why I didn't make it, right? And I've said this before on the podcast. They're waiting for that excuse. So when they hear that video, they're like, oh, shit, I don't have $300,000 to create an album. Like, that's the reason why I'm not, you know, going to make it. I don't know any artist where that is the math. That might be the math for her. And if I was managing her, we would we would have to review that math and that budget because that still wouldn't be the budget, you know, for her. She's got like 7 million monthly listeners. And I know she's been around for a long time. And sometimes when artists start in a major label system, you know, that's kind of the inflated budget that they were working with at the time. But now that things are more independent, you know, there's a lot more people in the space doing different things, engineering, a lot more people making beats, like they don't know how to conform to like how artists are making music today. Still at high quality. I'm not trying to take away. You can make a very high quality album for a fraction of the budget. Hit up my guy, DJ Payne one. He's not going to hit you for $40,000 for an exclusive. You know, he's got people that I'm sure he can connect you with that can help mix and master the project it's not going to cost you thousands of dollars per track. So this is not your out. If you listen to this and you like this, this, this may be how she set up. But even for her, I think they, uh, Payne and I were talking before we jumped on. It's like maybe if you are like the top of the top, this makes sense. This is like Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, like that budget could make sense. Maybe even a little more for those for those artists. But this is a wild budget to make it seem like this is what you need to make music in the music industry. We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. To be fair, I feel like she has writing credits with Justin Bieber. Uh, I'm looking this up right now. I, I, she has I huge writing you. credits. I mean, <clears throat> she wrote she wrote Fifth Harmony, Worth It. She wrote 
or at least co-wrote Timber for Kesha and Pitbull. She's written songs for Mariah Carey. So these are these are still the artists that are operating within, I would say, the kind of traditional major label system who are grandfathered in and probably still stay within the the budgets and financial requirements of, let's say, the 90s. I mean, yeah, California King Dead, Rihanna, Don't Wake Me Up, huge Chris Brown song. So I'm not, she's got Ariana songs, multiple, Mariah Carey, K. Michelle, yeah. So I'm not making an argument for the amounts for the average artist. 100% agree with Dame on that. I'm just saying for her, I could see this being her norm, especially because she's also a singer. So she's not going to record herself. And she's a vocal producer, so she doesn't need one. But I know a lot of artists who are doing well who also bring in vocal producers. Like I think about Kehlani. She's not on the same level. Obviously, Kehlani's bigger, but it's like... Kehlani will have multiple writers, vocal producers, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think it would be way more for an A-list star at, at these rates. I think her biggest, the biggest expense that stuck out to me that most people wouldn't be able to afford because the, the, the engineer in the studio at the rate was not that expensive. It's just the amount of time. She's saying 12 hour sessions, seven days a week, which is, she may be like that. I feel like she is. She's probably going into the studio like it's work because she's a writer. Whereas um, I think about Pierre Bourne. When I like I used to know Pierre and he's, you know, produced Magnolia. That was his first claim to fame. Then now his most recent is like he's done stuff on Donda. He's done a lot of stuff for Pharrell. But Pierre Bourne, when I first got to know him, he was an engineer at I think Epic or, or Interscope here or in Atlanta. And he was trying to get on as an artist. And he was like, yo, this is what I do. Most of the time when the labels pay for 12 hour sessions, I have to be there all day. He said, most of the artists don't come or they'll show up super late. So what I do is I trap out the extra hours to up and coming rappers. Right. So I feel like she sang 12 hours in the studio, like you said, Damon. And then people are like, yeah, 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 it's this expensive. But nobody, I don't know anybody going to the studio for that long, even when you have access to it. I had two artists signed to a label who had one of the best studios I've ever been to. And one of them was like, I realize I'm not taking advantage of this. I got to sign up for this time. So I agree with Dame. I'm just saying, I don't think for her, it's wild. Because of her type of credits, the standard that she's used to, if I'm not mistaken, she is independent or independent-ish. So she, at 7 million monthly listeners, is taking home a lot of the bread. And she's done a shit ton of sinks. So <clears throat> I think with things like that, she can justify that cost. But all of y'all, respectfully, relax. She has two platinum solo singles. She's not, she, both. She's, she's not independent. Yeah, she's on Def Jam. Like both of her hits? Yeah, hours and hours. Because if I, okay, either way, I I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, hours and hours may have been through her imprint, but it was on Def Jam, and then from what I could tell from the RIAA website, her follow up to that, which was also platinum, was just okay. Def Jam. But I'd be curious to see how that budget breaks down. You know, because everyone's in the comments section saying, "Damn, I got to come out of pocket one hundred and twenty thousand dollars." And I'm like, wait a minute. This is someone who's on Def Jam who, prior to going platinum herself, again, wrote hit songs for artists like Mariah Carey and Madonna. You know, just one, I can't conceive of being at that level as a songwriter to go from K. Michelle to Madonna just like that. And, and be so connected because, you know, these are, she, she was writing. I don't even know how you get in those rooms, especially with the producers. Like she was, you know, Stargate did um, Worth It for Fifth Harmony. And that that's it. These are hits. These are not just regular hits. These aren't like the kinds of, no disrespect to the new era. I'm in it. I'm getting hits in the new era. The money's very different and the metrics are different with, with the way streaming works. It, they, they just are. These are hits that are hits the old school way. So th we're talking about big money, big budgets, big music videos. Nowadays, you can get a hit 
like Rod Wave, when I listen to him, and I love Rod Wave, it's, I'm pretty sure he records everything himself. I think he's tracking everything himself. And he has hit after hit after hit. And a lot of artists do. Uh, Lil Wayne was tracking himself. That's, that's, remember with the documentary and everyone was like, oh my God, Lil Wayne's in the hotel room setting his, his uh, mic stand up. That's, that's how a lot of artists are doing it. She's not. And I, I wonder if that's because that's in, that's what's necessary. That's what the label tells her. Or if that's just the tradition that she comes from, if it's just the tradition that she comes from, I think absolutely she could cut that budget down by over half and still get the same result. But is it a psychological thing for her? That's what she needs for her process. I'm not going to judge that if that's what she needs and she has the, the resources to do so. Cool. I think the issue is not saying this is what, this is the standard I hold myself to. And therefore this is what I have to spend on it. It's presented as this is what you need to be an artist. And there's got to be cognitive dissonance because we are looking at, we have YouTube now, we have Instagram now, we're looking at these artists recording in these home studios, the songs that become hits a week later. And and you think, okay, well, maybe that's just a different type of music. I, I don't I don't think so. I think I think you can make amazing music with very few resources if you have the right people around you and you have the right vision you know how it's like when this is a terrible analogy but it's like when i go grocery shopping i know which grocery stores have the same shit for a lower price than the others so i have to go to three grocery stores because she's talking about spending twenty thousand to forty thousand on a beat the producer and this is an advertisement for dylan graham look him up um d-y-l-a-n-g-r-a-h-a-m you can license one of his beats for forty dollars right now if you want to buy it exclusively off his website, it's about ten thousand, but it's the same beat, you know, different different usage rights. So you see that big disparity, and I think that disparity is representative of what we're talking about. You know, you could spend five hundred dollars to get a song mixed and mastered, or you could spend ten thousand to get it mixed and mastered. It's ultimately your choice. Are are, are the fans going to necessarily be able to tell the difference? Probably not. Is it financially or economically smart to do that? Um, I guess it depends on your situation, but it's entirely up to the individual.